you would have thought that considering their biggest threat, Mothri himself, no longer being alive, those people who he had issues with would finally be able to close the door on the drama that they had been involved in over the past few years. But sadly, this would not be the case. In April 2021, Mothri's manager Rainwater, who already having been assaulted numerous times for his affiliations to Mothri, would continue to be targeted, with a video circulating showing him being harassed at an airport. Look at him talking to them boys, telling, telling the on King Day, telling. Club has let's go outside and fight, like I said. We're at the airport, but look, we gonna meet up. Let's do it, it's outside. I'm, 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 I'm my mama, if we say meet up, you is not gonna take me back, you is not gonna meet up. Put on my channel, on my channel. On my channel like, you say what? On my channel. That video would circulate with a caption suggesting that the man filming was affiliated with Yellow Beezy. And a post following the incident would see Rainwater atting Beezy himself, saying to stop sending people to harass him. Some months later, on July the 27th, 2021, Rainwater would appear on Say Cheese, suggesting that he believed Sean Cotton had hurt the Dallas rap scene by taking everything online. Let me tell you what happened with Dallas, yeah. Let me tell you what happened with Dallas. The 18 and Up Club and you. Oh. So any rapper in DFW right now go make a music and I got to get it on Say Cheese. They don't do no hustle. You don't see, bro, when you came on the scene, you don't see no more posters. You don't see no more flyers. You don't see no more CDs. You don't see none of that because it's when I make a music, I got to go to Say Cheese. If they go over there with you and then they be so excited, then they put everything on your shoulders and they sit in the house all day and just look Definitely. at their phone and wait for you to post them. So when you stop exactly. posting them, it's like, what should I do? Man, Sean Cotton me over. No, you yeah. yourself over because you don't get outside to, to get outside their house and grind for yourself. This was a much more generous way of putting it than some other people. Charleston White, who had been complaining about the violence in Dallas corrupting the youth from the very start, had suggested, as did other people, that Say Cheese had instigated the beef in Dallas by giving a voice to both sides of the war. You let Say Cheese trick you. That's how, that's exactly how Mo 3 got killed. You wrong, Sean Cotton. Yeah, this is what they've been telling me about. Said, man, watch him. He missed it. That's how he got. He got Mo three killed. He got Mo three killed. That's how Mo three got killed. He the one started that. And Charleston White would never do another Say Cheese TV interview. Never. Say Cheese would deny this, saying that Mo 3's friends and family all have love for him, also pointing out that the beef escalated when Roy Lee was killed, saying specifically that he didn't allow Roy Lee onto his platform to expose Yellow Beezy when he was asked. The Mo three didn't get real until Roy Lee died. Yeah. Roy Lee wanted to do an interview with me, trying to expose Yellow Beezy. And have no. I ever interviewed Roy Lee? No. no. I said I would never do that to Roy uh, to, to Yellow Beezy. Say Cheese would also defend himself in an extensive interview on Vlad TV, saying that he tried to mediate the beef, but he couldn't make any progress. You know, a lot of people felt as though I let it on. I got on the phone with multiple guys, like, yo, is there a way we can sit down? Can we do this? Can we do that? And I tried for months to hash it out and to get them to squash it, it just didn't happen. It was too late. Now, I personally don't agree with the idea that Say Cheese or any of the other interview platforms are responsible for escalating the violence. Say Cheese is really just trying to help the artists in his city promote their rap careers. And for every bit of disrespect that a rapper dishes out to an op in an interview on a major platform, that same rapper will go out of their way on their own Instagram pages, dishing out 10 times the disrespect to the ops. But you never hear anybody saying that Instagram or Facebook are responsible for stoking violence and giving people on both sides of a war a platform. People want to call DJ Vlad the police. I think Mark Zuckerberg is the goddamn head of the FBI. Anyway, at a certain point, it gets absurd to blame Sean Cotton for the violence in Dallas. When Mo3 was all over Instagram and in his own music on all DSPs, mocking the ops for getting shot, begging them to slide and mocking them for being scared to come outside, even in songs released after his death. Aside from the assailants that pulled the trigger, the next person who painted the biggest target on Mo3 was Mo3 himself and his rivals in music who were all knowingly involved in escalating this feud from the streets into the music industry, even after the point where they all had too much to lose to continue beefing in this way. But strangely, even months and months after his death, Mo3's enemies would still feel the need to disrespect him in music. In August 2021, Trapboy Freddy releases his latest project, Distractions, featuring the incredibly disrespectful song titled Shirt, which he gleefully sung along to on Instagram Live. This was a diss song aimed at Mo3, all about killing him and putting him on on a shirt, saying the stepper got stepped on and they turned potato head to a baked potato. He would reference fighting in Walmart and saying that Mo3 can't go shopping again now he's dead. He would mock the fact that Mo3's biggest song came out after his death, as well as flipping lyrics from Mo3's posthumous hit, saying that despite the song being called Outside, 
Mo3 was inside. He raps saying that Mo3 got left dead on the I-35 for dissing BZ, and he referenced a shooting in traffic, saying he got caught slipping by that black Audi. He says that his ops will get hit for talking on social media, and that they will dig the dead body out the ground. He says every time something happens in the street, his ops rapped about it, and they died just for rapping about it, not living it. He referenced BZ and his crew chasing down Mo3's manager, saying that he needed a new manager, and they hunted him down like an animal. Trap Boy Freddy would defend his constant dissing of the deceased Mo3, telling Say Cheese of all people that Mo3 dissed him and his dead loved ones for years. So he's dissing him back and he cannot let the hatred go. Some people felt like Trap Boy, let it go. Like, let it go, bro. It's over. It's, it, it's never can be let go. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could you let go of your partner? How could you let go of talking about your partner that was just dead? Like, how could you let go having to look out for your partner kids and like that? Talk to your partner and their mamas and shit. You watching multiple people cry. That all three years. I can't condone Freddy's actions, but this was a bit of an insightful moment because it's really this mentality that got these young men stuck in a cycle of violence that's near impossible to stop. Whilst Mo3 was alive, he dished out a lot of pain, destruction, and death to his enemies to the point where even his own death wasn't enough for his enemies to feel like they could move on. When things get this deep and this many lives have been lost, you're looking at a lifelong feud that death doesn't even give you an escape from. But perhaps the one thing that Freddy had overlooked in his decision to keep dissing, even after his rival's death, was all the extra attention they'd got from the authorities as a result. Because only one day after Freddy's diss song released, Yellow Beezy would find himself in hot water with the cops again, this time being pulled over by the cops who conducted a search of his car, finding a rifle and 400 grams of a control substance, with the suggestion at the time that this was lean, codeine-based cough syrup. But Beezy would later say that these supposed drugs were in fact just a bottle of hand sanitizer styled to look like prescription cough syrup, with Beezy later taking to the internet attempting to clear the record about the supposedly false drug charge. Yeah, and got arrested for hand sanitizer, not no drugs, bro. Let me tell you how desperate they is just for making a risk. Like, the homie got a brand of hand sanitizer that looked like drink. But it say hand sanitizer on her. You know, just like how the girls got the eyelashes in the pill jar, but she got um, hand sanitizer in a drink bottle. And it say hand sanitizer on her. Police weren't trying to hear it. They thought I was trying to cover up everything. Like, so they took me to jail over hand sanitizer. And the only reason they were able to charge me with the guns is because of the drug. You know what I'm saying? So they got to run labs and everything. So that's why they charged me with it. With that feeling right now, it's an unknown feeling or whatever that is. So. That's why I went to jail. I'm the first rapper that went to jail over hand sanitizer. Perhaps you could say that it's really just asking for trouble, riding around with legal goods made intentionally to look like illegal drugs. But on the other hand, considering the recent going-ons in the city, no doubt the cops of Dallas were watching the moves of Yellow Beezy, Trap Boy Freddy, and everyone in their circle closely, and for good reason. Because it would seem that the gangsters affiliated with Mo3 were still out looking for vengeance. And the month after the hand sanitizer debacle, yet another life would be claimed in this war. This time, the apparent brother of the accused shooter of Mo3, Kiwon White, who rapped under the name Ducky P, real name Nyrion Beasley. He would be found dead in a car outside a residence in Lancaster, Texas on September the 1st, 2021, with this killing later being confirmed on social media, and subsequent posts from Kiwon White confirming that his brother had lost his life. And apparently, the connection between Ducky P and Mo3 ran deeper than the connection with his shooter, as Ducky P had released a track called Rumors the month after Mo3's death, interestingly uploaded to Go Yayo's YouTube channel. And in the track, Ducky P seemed to diss Mo3, saying the last person who dissed me ended up on TV, along with lyrics about killing people in public and running down on ops in skinny jeans, which could well be a direct reference to the outfit that Mo3's killer was wearing at the time of the shooting. The track was essentially Ducky P responding to rumours that he'd been involved in the killing of Mo3. The track not only had his brother, Mo3's accused killer, Kiwon White, dancing right next to him, but as he raps lyrics about bailing his shooters out, he shows on screen an image of his brother's arrest record. Strangely, after the killing of Ducky P, footage then circulated showing Mo3 in the background of an old Ducky P music video shoot. It really seemed like Mo3's death had cast a dark shadow over the city of Dallas, and this cycle was sadly showing no signs of ending. And at this point, one man had truly had enough. Our old friend, Charles Charleston White, who had spent many hours on the internet ranting about the damage that gangster rappers had done to his community, famously going on the internet and wishing death on all gang members. Death to all GDs and BDs. May they all die like King Von. May they all die like Trekkio the Ruler. May they all die like Nipsey Hussle in vain. 
Eventually, Charleston White would turn his attention squarely towards the gang-affiliated rappers in Dallas. In August 2020, going live and telling the world that he was a Mo3 fan and he was picking sides against Trap Boy Freddy and Yellow Beezy. What Trap Boy Freddy do to you? Nothing. I'm just a Mo3 fan and I'm friends with Rainwater. I'm a Mo3 fan and I'm taking sides now. Ain't nobody riding for Mo3, so I'm riding for Mo3. And I'm saying Trap Boy Freddy and Yellow Beezy in the name of Mo3. Kill Mo 3. I'm mad in the mother every time I pass by that mother highway and this will celebrate. You trap boy Freddy. You a straight up. You in yellow bees. Look what happened to you. It was cursed. I told you when Mo 3 died, you would go be cursed. Your careers was go drown and die. And he would go on to tell his followers on social media that he was willing to put the police on the likes of Trap Boy Freddy and to put a stop to any illegal activities going on in his studio. Make me mad, make me mad, Trap Boy. I'll find out every dope spot you got and shut that down. You better shut your up, little boy. Put the police on every last one of you. You better shut your up, Trap Boy Freddy. Your, your weed house is gonna get shut down. I don't give a about no shooters. Shooters get arrested too. You talking about I shut them weed houses down, trap boy. All that dope and weed y'all selling over there. I know which FBI agents to call to put on your mother where you don't get out of jail, boy. Let her say my name again out of Oak Cliff, trap boy. I'm shutting that down. All that dope y'all selling out that studio. I'm gonna make one phone call. You too, yellow. Better sit y'all little young down somewhere. I'm cleaning this up around here. Now, seemingly, Charleston White was not just joking in this video, because within a couple of weeks of that video being posted, on September the 9th, 2022, the DEA and Dallas police would conduct a raid on the KFI recording studio, which Yellow Beezy and Trap Boy Freddy were apparently known to frequent. The DEA raided a popular recording studio, KFI, that brings in some of the top rappers in the nation. A lot of local rappers, a lot of famous rappers from other states, and we done linked up with a lot of different people here. This is video from inside the studio from a recent WFAA interview. The raid caught some in the industry by surprise. We do have a drug sales problem in our city. Uh, and unfortunately, those individuals are often involved uh, with firearms as they're engaging in drug sales. One of the owners of the KFI studios, Nico, told us the people involved were patrons and tenants of the building and did not involve the owners. He said no KFI management or owners were involved in illegal activity. None of us have been placed under arrest or investigation. Following the raid, more footage circulated showing the studio destroyed. Apparently, eight other locations around Dallas had been raided, with the cops confiscating drugs and guns. And while reports circulated that the police had been conducting a months-long investigation into the matter, soon after the news broke, Charleston White would take to social media once again, taking credit for the studio raid and threatening to take further action against rappers causing crime in his city. Yeah, seeing the FBI raid his spot, I love it. I told that guy I was sending the FBI to his mother house. You think we gonna let them keep setting them pressed up fentanyl pills around here? Nah, we, nah, we shutting this down. You say great police work today. Great police work today to my guys, man. I'll say. Look, I definitely don't agree with everything Charleston White says, and his methods of getting attention certainly rub some people up the wrong way. But at the end of the day, he just represents one of, I'm sure, many people in the Dallas community who are fed up with the years of drugs and violence. And I'm sure there's dozens of people like him, perhaps less vocal on social media, who are doing the same thing, putting in a tip to the cops and trying to improve things in their community. A lot of people like to blame music for gang activity and crime. Hell, some of the really stupid Stupid people like to blame the likes of Say Cheese, DJ Academics, Adam22, or even me for raising awareness about the issues going on in the streets and behind the music. But at the end of the day, the individuals responsible for crime in a location where crime is abundant are the criminals themselves and the authorities responsible for policing this community. Let's be real, 
Mothri clearly had a death wish if you go by many of the statements that he made in his life where he incited violence against others and himself. He left behind an incredible catalogue of inspiring music, but also a lot of hateful rhetoric and anger towards the other young men in his city. Clearly Mo3, Yellow Beezy, Trap Boy Freddy and Go Yeo didn't get dealt a fair hand in life. They were born into situations and areas infested with gang activity, crime and disadvantage. And that's not their fault. The system failed them and they started life at the bottom of an uphill struggle. But their disadvantage doesn't absolve them of all wrongdoing. Once Mo3 became a famous millionaire off of music, he really should have focused on the blessings he had, rather than continue to indulge in and encourage the gang activity of his dark past. It seems like he really forgot those wise words of his father who told him in jail at the very start, just focus on making music about the life you lived and don't continue living it. Mo3 truly had a chance to break the cycle, but unfortunately, just like Roy Lee, his pride seemed to get the better of him where he simply couldn't leave the past where it was. Dallas is a big enough city for more than one big name rapper to exist, but clearly the pain of the past ended up holding everybody back. And even after the death of their biggest rival, it seemed that Yellow Beezy and Trap Boy Freddy couldn't even move forward from the past positively too. And unfortunately now the added attention that they're getting from the authorities threatens to see them losing everything that they've been working so hard for. And sadly, if they just continue to perpetuate the idea that they're the biggest gangsters in the Dallas music scene, it wouldn't surprise me if the feds come down on the entire operation with a big RICO case, taking down their entire business, legal or otherwise. Unfortunately, this story is another case of young men starting out life rough and struggling to shake off the baggage of that past when they finally have a chance chance to break the cycle. I hope this video serves as a lesson to anyone going through hard times, that you can make something of yourself and turn these situations around. But when you do, make sure you don't let that past drag you back to the bottom or put you in an early grave. Because no matter where you come from or what you've been through, you have the potential to become whatever you want to be, for better or for worse. I hope you learned something from this story. I certainly did. And rest in peace to everybody who lost their lives in the Dallas rap community.